Hello everyone, as you can see we got quite a few components on the table as today we are doing a build. This build was actually for my mom, believe it or not. Um, I originally built her a 4th gen Intel system maybe about, was it 6 years ago now? And it's giving her issues, uh, She it's making a loud noise and uh, she lives halfway across the country. So unfortunately you can't just go and debug it. Also, the power button fell off the case. I don't know how that happened, but uh, it did. So I'm going to go ahead and put together her a new system. And so I'm going to keep this video relatively quick. I'm going to be building this over the next few days, mainly whenever I have a few, you know, half hour when I get home from work. So uh, to start our system off, we have a ASRock uh, B450M Pro for our 2.0. This is a micro ATX board, uh, socket AM4, obviously. Uh, I'm hoping that this is going to work out of the box with our CPU. This is a Ryzen 7, if I can flip this over, a Ryzen 7 5700G, obviously the G meaning it has Radeon graphics on board, so it has integrated graphics. And this is actually an 8-core 16-thread CPU, so she's getting a big, big boost in performance over the 4th gen i5 that was in the system, which is obviously only 4 cores and 4 threads. So this is going to be a huge upgrade, and I'm hoping that this will last her for, you know, I mean, she only asked me if she could play her Facebook games on it, so I think that will handle it just fine. Uh, but obviously they're going to future proof. Uh, I don't know why I decided to do this, but I wanted for RGB RAM. It was only a few dollars more, and I'm like, <laughs> it's going to look a little funny, it's going to look a little silly. But this is a Corsair Vengeance Pro. Uh, I mean, Vengeance RGB Pro SL, uh, clocked at 3200 megahertz. I didn't want to go anything too fast. Um, I mean, it does the, it does matter for the integrated GPU because it, it, it works the frequency of the RAM because obviously they're sharing the memory. Uh, but with a system like this, I don't want it like, you know, have to run too fast memory where things could happen. Uh, keep it around JDX speed, which is around 3200 megahertz for, I believe, the Ryzen 5000 series. I could be wrong though, I'm not doing any research on these videos like I normally do which makes them very professional. Terrible thumb, look at thumb in there. So also a Fenvi, uh, Fenvi, <laughs> we got this on Amazon. This is a Wi-Fi card. Some other board doesn't have Wi-Fi. Usually I use um, uh, just regular laptop M2 cards and a riser, but I didn't have the time. So I bought this on Amazon because it arrived pretty quickly. This is a one terabyte NVMe drive. This is from my old system. I actually upgraded this to a more or the drive to a 980 Pro, a two terabyte one. So this is what I'm going to use. And under that, uh, I mean, this is what I'm going to use for the OS. Make sure to touch all the, the good components of my bare hands. <laughs> but under that, this is a heat sink. Uh, I bought this on Amazon too. This is a, if you can see under that nice lovely sticker, it is a M2 heat sink. Uh, just so I'm going to put that on there to keep it nice and cool. And uh, so it runs well. <laughs> I mean, that's that's going to be the job of that. And I'm also going to have two one terabyte Western Digital blue hard drives in a RAID configuration. Uh, my mom's boyfriend also uses this. Uh, we'll be also using this computer. Does some financial stuff, so I'll, I'll tell them to store all the important stuff on there. Uh, so those are still coming in the mail. I got to wait for them to show up. Uh, so I'm going to be building this computer, obviously, out of part, um, I mean, in pieces, and this is obviously step one, which is lay out all the components. For our PC, uh, our PSU, our PC PSU, or PSU for our PC, uh, get a little better speech there, uh, is a Seasonic uh, overkill unit, 850 watts. This is what I happen to have, you know, in inventory, aka what I had in my, my components boxes. It was brand new. Um, but obviously 850 watts for a system have GPU, it's uh, definitely overkill. But if you looked at PSU prices uh, these days, uh, they are quite expensive, mainly because um, the component shortages, inflation, all the fun stuff that's happening. And to wrap it up, we're all going to put this, uh, obviously I'm working on my electrostatic safe carpet, as always. We're all going to install this into an Antec VSK-10. This is a micro A2X case, nothing fancy. It's pretty small, pretty compact, which is going to be perfect for this system uh, because I'm going to have to ship this, obviously. And I don't normally ship systems because one is expensive and two, shipping always destroys them. But I'm hoping because there's no GPU in the air, we'll actually get by okay. So what I'm going to do, uh, maybe just tonight, maybe I'll at least install the motherboard and the CPU and the RAM and <laughs> almost everything. I guess it's easy when you only have an NVMe drive. You don't have to run as many modular cables. So I'm going to go ahead and start opening things up, and I'll cut to when I have some progress made. 
Got our motherboard all opened up. Uh, I got our M2 SSD, our heatsink installed, and it's installed in the slot. It blends in very nicely the motherboard, the overall aesthetic. I have our RAM installed. I believe these are the, the correct slots. Uh, I think this is A2 and P2, which according to the manual, I still read those. <laughs> those are what we should at least install, install the memory in first. Here's our Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 7 5700G installed in the system. Uh, obviously the big question here is, does the, uh, is the BIOS updated on this board to the point where the C CPU will work out of the box? Otherwise, I might need to borrow one of my friend's CPUs. I'm hoping this is not an old, old stock motherboard and it will be fine. I believe you need at least BIOS revision 5.0 in order to use the, the um, 5000 series on this board. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead, pop the heatsink on, and then we'll install the motherboard in the case. And here's where we're going to cut it for day one. As you can see, we got our motherboard installed. Had to reorientate this um, shroud because it was pointed this way. So I got it nice and orientated. There you go. That fixes my OCD right there. Uh, we got our Wi-Fi card installed. I'm still trying to figure out how to route the Bluetooth in, uh, cable. If I don't block it on my arm. Uh, Want to connect up the, obviously the Bluetooth lead to the USB port. Probably going to go around this way and hook it in. There's nothing going to be in the PCIe-X 16 slot or the um, PCIe or by 4 slot, which is also the next 16 slot. So um, the last things I have, to, not the last thing I have to do, but tomorrow, uh, it's been a long day. So tomorrow I'm going to do what I call the knitting. Uh, I'm going to hook up, obviously, fans, probably put a couple of additional case fans in the front here, uh, put in the power supply, hook up all the, the cables and stuff. So that's going to be tomorrow's project. And until then, I will sleep on it. <laughs> so uh, cut to tomorrow. So here we are in day two, uh, so I'm picking up where I left off. I'm going to probably just work on routing this, uh, connect up the fan cables, connecting up the front panel cables that includes the USB 3 header, um, power uh, power LED, you know, power on switch, power reset switch, hard drive indicator, activity light LED, and I'm also going to hook up the uh, audio header. found these two um, Antec uh, two-speed fans in my box of fans. <laughs> And I just cleaned them off, so I'm going to go ahead and pop the uh, front bezel off, I guess you'd call this, and then install these here. Uh, I'm going to have to get a, a uh, Molex lead for my power supply, because these are Molex fans. Now, I'll probably set up the speed to low, because obviously you don't need a lot of airflow in this machine. Just like to have some going across in general. So uh, I'm going to cut to uh, the work I do today. I uh, probably won't do too much. A little tired, as you can tell. But... Uh, I'll see you in a second. After about half an hour of work, we've gotten a lot of progress done. Got the fan hooked up, kind of hid the cable, wrapped it around here. Connected to the sysfan header right there. I connected the Bluetooth header, the audio header. I uh, kind of cable tied that back there. I ended up having to go with these two Corsair fans as the Antec ones I was using. Uh, it turns out the one I installed here had a bad bearing. I also put some dust filters in there to protect from the cables here. So. I also got the USB 3 header and the front panel connector is installed. So um, tomorrow I'm going to hopefully get our hard drives we're going to be installing and I will hook up the SATA cables and install the power supply and connect the 24 pin and the 8 pin CPU connector. And we'll basically have a system ready to go. I might even test one game on it just to see how this um, 5700G performs. So until then, I will see you all, uh, I guess, tomorrow. Okay, so we're on to day three. Unfortunately, our hard drives haven't arrived, so I have to wait for them to come in the mail. Ah, no big deal. They should come tomorrow now. So uh, I'm going to work on installing the power supply today. So we're going to get our CSonic power supply installed and hooked up. With a, uh, a build like this, it's so easy. I just need the 24-pin connector, 8-pin uh, connector, and one SATA lead. So it's going to make it because after we switch those Molex fans to um, just normal 3-pin uh, fans, uh, It'll be easy. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to, I could also have just gotten in a Molex to SATA adapter uh, or SATA Molex adapter, whichever way you want to say it. Uh, power those fans, but... All right, enough rambling. Let me get the power supply in. Got our power supply installed. Looks pretty easy. Um, got our 24-pin connector. Routed it to the top. Our 8-pin connector. It's a little off-center, which is unfortunate. It triggers my OCD. But overall... Very neat, very clean build so far. Uh, the last thing I need to do is just install the two drives that will be going in here. I already ran the um, SATA lead with the power supply, so should be good to go. Uh, so I'll cut to tomorrow.
So it's day four, and look what showed up. Uh, a couple of one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drives. Uh, turns out, it looks like someone basically sold me uh, HP models or HP part numbers. Uh, this is what happens when you uh, go on Newegg Marketplace and realize you're not buying it from Newegg, or or not realize that you're buying not from Newegg. But I mean, if they if they work and they're fine, then I have no issue with that. So gonna go ahead and find some SATA cables, and install the drives, and then we'll boot up the system and see if it works. So. And with that, we are done. So I think the build's basically complete. I'm basically going to put the side panel on and boot it up. And hopefully everything works and I don't have to borrow a CPU to update the BIOS. So back in a few. And would you look at that? Looks like everything's working. <laughs> I got a little worried because it took a while to boot up. Uh, usually the last few systems I built, uh, they would turn on, shut down, do some memory trading and turn back on. But this one, it looked like it turned on the whole time. So as you can see, we got a B450M Pro. I'm guessing this BIOS revision is late enough, late enough for the 5700G uh, to be recognized out of the box, which was very nice. Otherwise, I would have had to borrow one of my friend's CPUs. And there we go. I've got the system. I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to flash the latest BIOS. I'm going to, you know, tweak all my BIOS settings, set up Windows 10, uh, not Windows 11 yet. And I'm going to then, obviously, install the drivers, get everything ready, and then box up this machine and ship it down. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit bonus footage at the end of me playing just Halo on the integrated graphics and seeing how well it plays. Uh, but if I don't, I will see you guys next time. This is a quick video on building a basic, uh, can I call this basic system, uh, for my mom. So, alright guys, uh, either cut the bonus footage or I'll see you in the next video. So a little bit of bonus footage, here's me uh, playing Halo Infinite on the uh, integrated graphics on the 5700G. I'm playing it with a mouse and keyboard with only one hand, so that's probably why I just died. And not because I'm bad at the game, but uh, as you can see, it's kind of playable. I mean, it's pretty playable, uh, but this is on low settings with a 65% resolution scale, I think at 124. Uh, or is it 1024 by 768 because uh, this is a 4x3 monitor that I'm using and I had to go into the BIOS and let's see if I can use my there we go now that I moved the camera uh, I had to go to the BIOS and set the um, the frame buffer manually because it was only at 512 megabytes so I had to change the frame buffer from 512 megabytes I changed it to 4 gigabytes right now uh, you could probably get a little bit better performance with this uh, APU if you had faster memory the memory I'm running is only 3200 megahertz and if you overclocked a little bit, but as you can see, it's definitely playable here. Uh, I mean, me playing it is a question because I was I'm using one hand and tilting the camera. Uh, oh, the bot's gonna get me. Can I beat him down? Yeah, look at that. So, all right, so there's a little bit of bonus footage, and I'm gonna uninstall the game because I gotta, uh, you know, pack this machine up and get ready to ship. So, uh, until then, everyone, I will see you all in the next one.